In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And then this is what happened while Daniel uh, was fasting. After he fasted, fasted. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedekel, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphemus. His body also was like the burrow, and his face has the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel alone, saw the vision for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. Holy Father God, we thank you for your ancient word, but your word even though written long ago, is still powerful today. And uh, we praise you and we thank you for your system of grace. We thank you for your goodness, your long suffering, your mercy, and your love towards such wretched people as we are. And we Thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for salvation full and free. That would even lead us to even think about such things that we're dealing with today. It is only because of you, God, only because of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, only because of the power of your Holy Spirit, that uh, through fasting and by fasting and prayer, as you see fit, you reveal things like this to us that we have to correct, confess, deal with. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for giving us fresh revelation, not anything that we need to add to the canon, of course, but uh, you open our eyes to some things the world does not see, and even some folks in the church don't see, through prayer and fasting. And you give us wisdom, and you give us knowledge, and you give us understanding, you give us insight, you give us vision for the future on, on, uh, regarding what's going to happen next. And we, uh, and we benefit from that, and others can benefit from that as uh, you giving us the ability you gave the seers, the seers back in the Old Testament to be able to see what is happening all around us and what will happen. And uh, we can be warned ourselves and uh, 
to save ourselves a whole lot of trouble and problems and heartache and headache. And we can also share the vision with others who are in the household of faith who can't see it and uh, preserve them from danger as well. So Lord, thank you for prayer. Thank you for fasting. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Help us to walk in the power of your Holy Spirit and help us to be able to continue with penetrating spiritual eyes, look through the foolishness look through the lies and the liars and uh, look through the Judases and the Sanballats and the Tobiases and keep on working on the wall and uh, uh, understand that we cannot come down now. But we've come this far by faith. We pray that uh, you would help those of us who struggle with the sin of gluttony, the besetting sin and the weight which holds us back from having a good testimony before a dying and lost world and in the midst of the church and, uh, and this is the root cause of the problem uh, we can lie and we can make up things but the truth of the matter is most of us in the church eat too much we far beyond what we need and it is a sin in your sight even though you've been very gracious and forgiving towards us. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins, our failures and faults in this regard and in this area and help us to truly repent. You've already put within me a heart of repentance, a spirit of repentance during the 21 day Daniel fast right before Thanksgiving. And then of course, this, is all, this was already scheduled but in this fast and during this fast, you have revealed to me that uh, uh, it would not be wise for me to continue eating all of the meats that I have eaten down through the years on a daily basis, uh, but to rather uh, enjoy uh, those meat meals on special days only holidays, birthdays, and uh, anniversaries, and so forth, and uh, by your grace, I uh, intend to do that, and I pray that you would uh, bless that, and I believe that just doing that alone will uh, cause me to shed all of the weight that I need to shed, and uh, will uh, kill the spirit of gluttony and uh, destroy it uh, and uh, uh, over time uh, things should change uh, pretty uh, quickly so lord thank you for revealing that to me going forward and i pray that you grant me your grace and the power of your holy spirit to do that and uh, i pray for others who are going to follow suit to do the same Lord, we pray now that you would speak to our hearts and have your Holy Spirit uh, to move mightily. Uh, forgive us and cleanse us of our sins, wash and cleanse us afresh and anew in the precious blood of Christ in our spirits, our hearts, and our souls and minds. Crucify our flesh afresh and anew in the old man within us. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit to not only preach your Holy Word, but to hear your Holy Word and to do it. The Lord God in heaven, as you know, the devil is fighting against us uh, in every uh, which way he can. I pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his hosts and the satanic spirit of Judas, betrayal, and sabotage, the Lord, and Sanballat and Tobias from this place and from the people here, that everybody will listen to your voice and not the voice of the devil, and uh, surround us with the band of your holy angels, the wall of your holy fire. Place, Lord, upon us the whole arm of God. We pray that you would bless uh, this meeting to go uh, smoothly, decently, and in order as it is going now live over five different streams uh, around the world 
and uh, five or six different streams live, and then of course um, way more uh, platforms on demand. And so we pray that uh, over three million souls would hear the preaching of the gospel and get saved. We pray for over three million Christians to hear your word and uh, be moved by your Holy Spirit to be revived and brought back to you, their first love. And Lord, we pray that you'll touch the hearts of over three million people to give at least one dollar so that we can have the money needed to continue to preach the gospel around the world and uh, on multiple platforms and to hire the people we need uh, all around the world to help us get the word out and also to support the indigenous pastors and evangelists who have sent out the Macedonian call uh, for help. And Lord, we want to be a part of that more than what we have. Uh, we cast all care upon you, for we know that you care for us. Fill us with your peace and joy. And use us for your glory, your praise and honor. And for the salvation of lost souls, for the revival of Christians, and for the repentance of Christians in this area regarding gluttony. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. You may be seated. gentlemen, Dr. John Piper said, if we don't feel strong desires for the manifestation of the glory of God, it is not because we have drunk deeply and are satisfied. It is because we have nibbled, yes, as Christians, so long, thank you, so long at the table of the world, our soul is stuffed with small things, and there is no room for the great. If we are full of what the world offers, then perhaps a fast might express or even increase our soul's appetite for God. Between the dangers of self-denial and self-indulgence is the path of pleasant pain pleasant pain called fasting. Now let me say here today again that those of you who want to beat uh, the sin of gluttony, fasting for the Christian has to be a part of that. because nothing will break the stranglehold of gluttony and overindulgence like fasting. So may I lovingly encourage you and encourage myself that after this 40, 40 day fast, which should end around midnight on Monday or thereabouts, no, midnight on, yeah, Monday midnight, or better yet, 12 or 1 uh, Tuesday morning, or 
or better than that the next morning that you consider fasting once a week maybe Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday and, uh, and that one day fast will remind you about the battle you're fighting against overdoing it, overindulgence, the sin of gluttony. Now if you do not mind, let's bow our heads, not for a word of silence, but a word of prayer for the teenage children that were taken from us on yesterday by a another teenager who, as far as I'm concerned, is demon-possessed. And we pray for his salvation as well, but we need to pray for these families. Holy Father God in heaven, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, none of us here, we have never experienced anything like that. We don't know what these people are going through. We don't even have an idea. We just lift them up to you to comfort these mothers and these fathers and the extended family, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, uh, who probably loved the children more than their parents, the aunties, the uncles, the cousins, the sisters and the brothers, the church members and the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scout friends and the school friends and girlfriends and boyfriends. One was taken and the other left. A tragedy so deep that it broke down one of the toughest CIA commentators, former CIA, now a commentator for CNN, broke them down, broke them down. And of course, Lord, as I was hearing some of the dear parents trying to fight manfully on them, uh, as big and as tough and as hard as I am, It moved me as well. It's not even about, it could be my, it could have been my own children. It's not about that. Because at least I'm the, I would know where my children are. I do believe they'll be with you. These parents, many of them, don't know you're a savior. And we pray that every Bible believing church would reach out to them in a godly, loving, appropriate fashion. And Lord, have your Holy Spirit to lead them to you. Because this could be the thing that would lead them to trust you as Savior. Let your will be done. Comfort them as only you can. Uh, we can't, but you can. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, As we continue looking at the vision that Daniel received after his 21 day fast, we return to the identity of the man who appeared to him by the river Hedekel, or better known as the Tigris River. Some believe that this man uh, some believe this man to be a pre-incarnation appearance of Jesus Christ. 
he certainly looks familiar to the description in the book of Revelation in the New Testament. Dr. Warren Worsby said frequently in the biblical account of salvation history, you find the Lord Jesus Christ appearing to his servants at special times either to deliver a special message or to prepare them for a special ministry. He usually appeared in a fashion compatible with their circumstances or their calling. To Abraham the pilgrim, Jesus came as a traveler, but to Jacob the schema, he came as a wrestler, if you will. Before Joshua attacked Jericho, Jesus came as captain of the Lord's armies. And to Isaiah, he revealed himself as the king on the throne. Now, beloved, at the end of his ministry, if you will, Daniel sees the glorious King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When we know that Jesus is standing with us and fighting for us, we can accept any circumstance and accomplish any task he gives us. Apart from the prophetic significance there is a sense in which Daniel's experience by the Tigris River conveys a lesson to all Christian leaders and people. There is a price to pay if we're to see what God wants us to see and hear what he is saying to us. You must understand even on something that you may think is small like overcoming the sin of gluttony which causes obesity causes people to be overweight and quite frankly to look uglier than what God made them Being fat and overweight does not make you look good. PHAT fat is uh, one thing, but FAT fat is another thing and is not good. Now, because there's so many people who are overweight in our society today, and we're not talking about the morbidly obese who can't even get out of the bed, as one lady uh, did yesterday, clocking in at 680 pounds. You might as well just say uh, 700 pounds. Hadn't been out of the bed in years. <clears throat> Family members were helping her get out of the bed and into a vehicle of some kind. Now she's going to get an operation. Speaker. Six hundred and eighty pounds. Uh, through fasting and prayer, God has to speak. God has to reveal some things to you. God has to tell you some things, and uh, such as God will help you to understand that this is not okay. You need to understand what the real problem is here. And the real problem is your gluttony. You're sitting down on the job of serving God enjoying yourself a little too much eating Twinkies and Ding Dongs and uh, 
all kinds of pies and cakes and sugary treats and washing it down with sodas of any kind, diet or non-diet. French fries, fried hamburgers, hot dogs, and we still don't know what's in a hot dog. God, God is going to have to speak to your heart about this, first and foremost. You can go and get an operation. You might have to go and get another one because if you don't deal with the gluttony issue, uh, then you're going to probably mess something up and have to get another operation because you're still wanting to overdo it. And uh, I cannot think of anything better than prayer and fasting to help remind you of what you're trying to accomplish here by the grace of God, overcoming the sin of gluttony, which will uh, wipe out a whole lot of other problems. And this gluttony is not just about overeating overindulging is also about overeating the wrong things, overindulging in the wrong things on a daily basis. Fasting might very well be the price we have to pay for the insight, direction, or answers we seek from God in this area and all other areas. And if God will help you, and he will, if you choose to let him help you, break you of this bad habit of gluttony, then God uh, can and will help you break other bad habits and sins in your life, big time. But I would encourage you, my beloved, it took you a long time to get to 400 pounds. It took you a long time to get to 350 pounds. Uh, maybe you did it ignorantly, saw everybody else doing it, and so you did it. Whatever the case, you're going to have to slow walk this one down. Trying to do it some other way is not going to work. While fasting is oftentimes painful for the body, not a fun thing to do, we should not despise the discipline because like Daniel, we might receive significant revelation for our lives as a result. I believe that that is true. Those who fast may very well end up seeing and hearing what others may miss. And not only do I believe that's true, I know that that is true. I'm convinced of it as sure as I'm black. I am convinced of it. I, I know that I know that I know that God will reveal things to you that even your other uh, preacher friends and Bible teachers and Christians, uh, Christian friends will never see. And they will marvel at stuff you'll say that and do that you don't marvel at, marvel at at all because you know it's not you. You think it's just common sense. All of these, uh, for example, all of these fancy, wonderful uh, names of diabetes medicines, diabetic medicines, to Lower your sugar, invocana, all these, all these great names. They never impressed me. And, and, and as sure as I'm standing before you, God told me, do not take some of these things, these pills that these people are offering to lower your sugar. Just stop doing the wrong things that you're doing. Stop eating so much. Stop being a glutton. 
go here, you, you know you ought to be eating more vegetables. You, you've known that for years. And that you ought to lay off this meat. Even your mother told you a long time ago, just eat some meat on the weekends and, and the, the rest of the week, eat vegetables. And you, you didn't listen, you, you disobeyed. You know that. And now we got diabetic medicines with fancy names. Companies are being sued uh, for millions of dollars because up here try messing with God's body, trying to lower your sugar with some kind of pill so that you can eat more sugar is insane. And now people are losing their legs in a hurry, losing their hands in a hurry going blind in a hurry, taking these pills with uh, crazy warnings and still missing some things that they should be warned about. Class action suits are, are being built up right now against all some a lot of these fancy medicines with fancy names. People have died taking these medicines. You don't really want to be messing with your sugar people and all of that. You need to do the right thing and lay off all of those cakes and candy and uh, french fries and all of that. Like one man said, you keep on eating those french fries and fried hamburgers and cakes and ice cream uh, and that means you don't love your toes, you don't love your feet, you don't love your hands because all of that's going to be amputated after a while. You don't love your sight. And if, if God does not, or you don't allow God to reveal this to you, if you don't listen to that still small voice, you, you're not going to change. You're going to keep on eating ice cream, cake, and anything you want thinking that you're indestructible until suddenly like one pastor told me started going blind started losing his feet feeling in his feet he said he said preacher it happened suddenly it happened suddenly all I know is they put me in the hospital and they wouldn't let me go home And I was doing the right things for the most part. He said diabetes is nothing to play with. And so beloved, we must be prepared to receive from God, even if the trade-off is acknowledging our own weakness and powerlessness. Amen, somebody. And that's okay. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the privilege of prayer and for the privilege of fasting. Thank you for what you do. Uh, and Lord, you know what you do. I cannot explain it all, but the thing you do in our hearts and lives when we truly fast and we truly pray and we don't cheat and we don't uh, complain, Lord, you speak to our hearts and you lead us and you guide us and you direct us you'll even tell us not to take certain medicines yes you will you've done it even though the doctor said we're going to try this and you said don't try that and by faith in you we follow you we still have our feet and we still have our hands while others and not only lost their feet and hands, they have died taking these newfangled medicines. You will reveal things to us. Uh, Lord, you know you revealed this, this gluttony thing to me. Uh, I 
knew I should have been eating more vegetables. I, I knew I enjoyed food too much, but I, I didn't take it seriously. I just kept on enjoying it until you, with your still small voice, came to me. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I want to come down hard on you about this, but uh, uh, preacher, this is wrong. This, this gluttony thing, this, just look around my church. Everybody's fat. Almost everybody is overweight. Almost everybody is obese. And, and then some still think they're fine and good looking. There's a, a, a self deception going on. Preach, I want you to speak about it, but I want you to use your own life and your own experience and your own overweightness. Uh, to break it down so that they, the people will feel like nobody's picking on them, that you're in it with them, and you need it too. And Lord, it was you that revealed to me that for the first time I needed to fast 21 days before Thanksgiving, which as you know, the, uh, the Thanksgiving season in previous years started on, January, on November 1st and continued all the way through January the 15th for me. Well, I just ran back and enjoyed some of the greatest food ever to my detriment and to my hurt. And so, Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for revealing this to me through prayer and fasting. I thank you that we're approaching 100 messages on this subject and trying to encourage uh, everybody, including myself, to stick with the Daniel Fast all the way through and then to fast once a week and to lay off meats and not kill the fatty calf until a special occasion. I give you the glory, praise, and honor for what you have done, for what you're doing, and the loving, uh, kind way in which you've done it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, beloved, some practical information regarding the Daniel fast and uh, the Daniel plan. This information comes from the Daniel plan, uh, 40 Days to a Healthier Life by Dr. Rick Warren, Dr. Daniel Amen, and Dr. Mark Hyman. And I haven't given you uh, some uh, special vegetarian type foods to eat. Uh, in a while and let me just say to you I, and I found this a recipe if you will in this book I do believe my oldest daughter fixed it for me for the first time and that is get yourself some cauliflower get yourself some rag aminos if you don't know what that is just ask somebody at the health food store or Kroger's they normally have it um, get yourself some pepper, get yourself a white onion, and a little garlic. Cut the little branches off of the cauliflower, and uh, they will look like little wings, if you will. And you season that up with what I just told you on a nice wide plate. And get you some sweet baby rays. Uh, that's his name. It's not. It's not sweet. But that's his name. Sweet baby rays. Uh, buffalo wing sauce. You toss that on there like you toss it on some wings. Flip them over. Get your little barbecue brush. Brush your cauliflower wings. And my friend, you'll have yourself a little treat, a vegetarian treat. Mm -hmm. You'll make your tongue slap your brain out your head. It's going to be all right. And you're going to find out it's not always the meat that you want. You just want that taste. So I thought I'd just toss that out uh, to you for free. This book, The Daniel Plan, guides readers to a adapt the Daniel fast and continue it as a lifestyle. Uh, and that's what, by the grace of God, I intend to do with some modifications. Uh, the 
authors go on to say, God uses his word to change us. The first tool God uses in changing us is the Bible. Through Holy Scripture, he teaches us how to live and how to change. And by the way, if you're not changing, you're not growing. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 tells us, All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. By the way, dear friends, are you striving to do every good work you can for the glory of God? Another way of saying this is that God's word shows us, number one, the path to walk on. Number two, when we have gotten off the path. Number three, how to get back on the path. And number four, how to stay on the right path. Don't we need that? The word of God helps us to do that. Uh, that is one of the reasons why I preach the gospel and I preach the word of God every day. Uh, it, it is amazing how people forget the word so quickly, isn't it? How we even forget the word so quickly. How even preachers forget the word so quickly after they preached it themselves. I have a preacher friend. He is older, but he's sharp as a tack. Uh, I would ask, ask him, what did, you, what did you preach today, preacher? Oh, preacher, I don't know. I preach it. I deliver the message, and I'm done with it. I don't think about it anymore. I say, you don't even know what you preach on? No, I preach it. I don't know. Isn't it amazing how we forget the word so quickly? Every day when I preach, after I pray and after we get settled in with a song or two, God begins to speak to my heart afresh and anew by His Spirit and by His Word. And that's the value of church, and that's the value, I believe, of uh, ministers of the gospel and preachers preaching every day if they can. If you are serious about changing your life, they go on to say, in any significant way, you are going to have to get into the Bible. You need to read the Bible, you need to study the Bible, you need to memorize the Bible, you need to meditate on the Bible, and you need to apply the Bible to your life. You need to obey the Bible. Jesus Christ said, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Sometimes learning the name, the truth about ourselves first makes us miserable because we want to deny it. But ultimately, the truth is liberating always. So the first element of the Daniel plan is faith. And the way you grow your faith is by filling your mind with the truth of God's word. Make sure you do that while you're fasting. Make sure you do this while you're on this journey. We're not talking about a diet. This is a lifestyle change. This is not something you get on and then you get off. For those of you who are 45 and older, you need to stick with this plan, the Daniel plan, for the rest of your life or some version of it. You do you. But you need to use this as a base. If you want to combine this with uh, the slim fa fast plan, so be it. You want to, if you want to combine it with the slim for life uh, diet, do what you need to do. So if you want to uh, do it in combination with the South Beach diet, do what you want to do. This is a biblical uh, 
foundational thing that uh, these uh, brothers are talking about that can be adapted to anybody's uh, life <clears throat> and whatever diet you want to add to it. Uh, I'm doing something a little bit different and it's not quite the same as this uh, but uh, uh, I believe that it will get the job done for me. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, uh, allow me to briefly turn your attention to your soul's uh, well-being. In this series, uh, as we focus on overcoming the sin of gluttony and managing our bodies as God intended, we must not lose sight of the most important part of our existence, our spiritual life, and believe it or not, I am speaking to uh, our spiritual life so that the physical life can be changed. For if we do not deal with even this issue from a spiritual standpoint, it's never going to change. But back to my point about your soul. My question for you is, beloved, if you were to die today, where would you go? Heaven or hell? You might be fit, but you can still be hit by a bus or hit by a car. Or die in battle. Or get in a car accident. Or be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And get shot by... A deranged individual killing multiple people. This can happen at the mall, this can happen and has happened at the post office, this can happen at a restaurant as it has in the past. You need to be ready. You need to be ready. So the question is, are you ready to die? Are you prepared to die, rather? Even those of you who are fit, who eat right, who exercise regularly, may God bless you by the way for doing that, must still address the condition of your soul. Have you been born again? Are you sure when you die you will go to heaven? If you're not sure, you need to believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that he died for your sins and that he was buried and rose again and pray and ask him to save you for the Bible says in uh, Romans 10 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you willing to trust Christ as Savior today? Pray and ask him to save you and he will save you. Repeat after me phrase by phrase believing in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and that I have done wrong in your sight. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. My failures and my faults. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray for his sake. Amen. Now dear friend of mine, if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead, and you want to trust him uh, as your Savior. Uh, dear friend, make sure you do this today. If you have not prayed with me, if you did not pray with me, make sure you do this today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can do it right in the comfort of your home. You can do it in your car. 
I would encourage you to pull over. If you did not pray that prayer with me, and you want to be saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou, you shall be saved. Pray and ask him to save you, and he'll save you. But if you prayed that prayer with me, and you believed in your heart, that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and rose again. Allow me to say to you, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man in the end, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, uh, please email me at dw3 at gospelitesociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well. And we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Dear friend, God loves you. We love you. And may God bless you real good is our prayer.